fun to look at the book by Idris Shah called Learning How to Learn Psychology and Spirituality in the Sufi Way. And this is a chapter called Characteristics of Attention and Observation. I'm just going to read the one page here. And this is a question and an answer. Uh, it goes on for many pages. And they give many principles. I'm just going to give the first the question and then the initial response. The question is, can you define characteristics of attention and observation as of importance in Sufic studies? And here's the answer. Where is this from? Let me learn. He says, study the attracting, extending, and reception, as well as the interchange of attention. One of the keys to human behavior is the attention factor. Anyone can verify that many instances, generally supposed to be important or useful human transactions on any subject, social, commercial, etc., are in fact disguised attention situations. It is contended that if a person does not know what he is doing, in this case that he is basically demanding, extending, or exchanging attention, and as a consequence thinks that he is doing something else, contributing to human knowledge, learning, buying, selling, informing, etc., he will a. be more inefficient at both the overt and the covert activity, and b. have less capacity of planning his behavior and will make mistakes of emotion and intellect because he considers attention to be other than it is. If it is true it is the most important that individual realize three things. One, that this attention factor is operating in virtually all transactions. Two, that the apparent motivation of transactions may be other than it really is, and that it is often generated by the need or desire for attention activity, giving, receiving, exchanging. Three, that it Attention activity, like any other demand for food, warmth, etc., when placed under volitional control, will result in increased scope for the human being who would then not be at the mercy of random sources of attention, or even more confused than usual if things do not pan out as they expect. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of follow-up here on Idris Shah, learning how to learn psychology and spirituality in a Sufi way. I just wanted to say some things. I guess yesterday, the video, I was too short and only reading that one page. People must have misunderstood. Uh, some, and I please, if you didn't see that yet, go watch that video before you see this one. Um, I just did read a little page uh, from Shah called Characteristics of Attention and Observation. And... I think what Shaw is trying to say is that there is an attention factor in all interaction. And that attention factor isn't the ability to attend and to be more and more mindful. If it is that, it's to be more and more mindful of our own desire for attention, our need to be attended to, our need to give and receive adequate and proper attention it starts, you know, early on in infancy. People, they tug on the pant leg of a parent, they reach out and they want to say, look at me, look at me, here I am. You know, you have this sort of, uh, people do things for other than what it appears. It may seem that someone is doing something uh, because they're interested in a musical instrument, but it may just be because they like the attention of that teacher. I think in in context of teaching and learning, this really is very important stuff to try to get at. I think anyone who has been in a classroom uh, with teacher, been both a professor and a student, or been a teacher and a student, there's, there is a sense in which no matter what the teacher is talking about, no matter how important the knowledge is and no matter how much they're trying to address that, they're also trying to say at that moment, pay attention to me. That's part of, you know, the, the necessary requirement. But it's sublimated in there. The same with the student. A student may have a genuine question, but that genuine question may also be partly 
an intention factor where they want people to just pay attention to them. Now, there's there are the overt cases where it's just almost all the, it's it's as if the person is attention deprived and they're now just raising questions just for attention or there's someone talking here on YouTube just for attention. Um are they saying something substantive? We're not sure. But even when someone is saying something substantive, there is a kind of attention factor there going on. This is what I think Shaw is trying to get people to become more aware of, to be, to recognize how people get involved in certain kinds of organizations. Um, this is a couple of things from the next page, and you know, perhaps I should have read these yesterday. Uh, but Shaw says, too much attention can be bad or inefficient. Too little attention can be bad. When people need a great deal of attention, they are vulnerable to the message which too often accompanies the exercise of attention toward them. Yeah, so oftentimes people will fall into ideological beliefs, they'll fall into a kind of brainwashing system because the people who offer those messages give them attention. Is we're likely to adopt the ideologies of the people who attend to us. Right? He says uh, here, this is one of them, uh, most people are almost always stimulated by an offer of attention since most people are frequently attention deprived. Yeah, so there is a sense in which if we're information deprived, uh, we may be very susceptible to kinds of attention appeals, brainwashing, falling into certain uh, beliefs, things like this. Uh, I think one of the last things he says here that maybe I'll just... Uh, end my reading here and then we'll talk a little bit more. He says, uh, attention upon oneself or upon a teacher without the exercise of securing what is being offered from beyond the immediate surroundings is a sort of short circuit. As Rumi said, do not look at me, but take what is in my hand. Yeah, I think it's not to shake a finger and tell people to get rid of the attention factor. You're not trying to make all activity somehow beyond the attention factor. It's to become mindful of the attention factor in all interactions. It's to realize that when people are interacting on an overt level, whatever it is that they're doing, they're also covertly engaged in a kind of attention factor. Now, to more or less degree, but I don't think we ever ultimately get rid of it. And I think if someone says, well, we do get rid of it, I'm completely without any need for attention and everything I do is just about the issue at hand, I think these are the places where we'd want to throw up the eyebrows and say, are you really sure that that's the case? Uh, Shaw perhaps would ask us, you know, is that person sufficiently attentive to the way their mind actually works the way that their interactions are actually interact, uh, the way that their interactions are actually unfolding, uh, the task is to become a way to recognize the need uh, for attention, and then to minimize the kinds of harms that come from people getting involved with activities, belief systems that are very harmful. But the only reason they're involved in them is because they're somehow getting attention from their participation. In it. How can we align the need for attention and the attention factor with socially beneficial practices, with those kinds of practices that are going to help the world uh, rather than just bring harm to it? Okay, thanks.